Welcome everybody to the Common Board January 10th, 2023. My name is Mike Aiken. I'm Hey, Council, how are you? Good. Happy New Year. Uh, Happy New Year, brother. Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, this is my Vice Chair, Mr. Ray Dell. Board members, Mr. Himmel, Mr. Franco, Mr. O'Brien. Our clerk, Mrs. Noonan. And the acting director is Mr. Conlon behind me for inspectional services. Mr. Duke was retiring in another week or so. Uh, we have one thing we got to do here first. Uh, first of all, if you got a paper or a cell phone, please put it on silent or vibrate, not to interrupt the meeting. If you miss speak, please go outside. It's hard enough to hear here as it is. If anyone's going to testify tonight, could you please stand up or raise your right hand? Anyone going to testify? If you think you might testify, you have to take an oath. If you don't, you will not speak. We have six, three, seven, four, eight, ten. Anyone else? Uh, Mr. Franco, give an oath, please. Raise your right hand if you're going to testify. You'll swear that anything that you say before the board today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So, if you got, I do. I'm not supposed to say the God. Wow. Well, yeah. Four hundred twenty-three, buddy. <coughs> <coughs> I don't know. We did though. We all talked. All right. Uh, one one thing is going to be. Point two eight five on the. DBA twenty three eighty five. I have a letter here. Uh, yeah, if you want to do that, you want that case. Twenty three eighty five. I have a letter here for the twenty four. Vice chair, chair that meeting. So, here we go. DBA twenty three eighty five. Robert Bernier for a variance finding to demolish existing structures on multiple properties in construction forty six hundred residential building on the premises number twelve thirty four twelve forty four Furniture Parkway and two eleven two seventeen Copeland Street, Quincy. I make a motion to move that to January 24th. Second. On the motion, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Back to you, Mike. Old business. Oh, yeah, you can do the same stole. Look at that. <laughs> Keep an eye on me. First case in old business. Ronald Samaretti, Mary, then Maria, I don't know his name, but a uh, special permit for to erect a sign on the premises 541 Washington Street. Is the applicant here? Just a second. Oh, you got here. Come on up, please. Name and address for the record. Hi, my name is Arlo Silmeri. I do not know Roland Silmeri. Right, what happened last meeting? Uh, last meeting, my dad was here, but he doesn't speak very good English. So. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, why don't you tell us what you want to do? Yeah, uh, we basically just want to set up this sandwich signboard. Um, it doesn't obstruct the sidewalk or the entrance to the parking. It's located at 541 Washington Street, like you said. What's the size? The sizing? I'm not sure, but I have pictures here that I can show you for a moment. Sure, very cool. <clears throat> so just the exterior on the... The folding side? The folding side? Yeah, just the folding side. On the street? Yeah, by the windows. So is it temporary? Is it removable? Yeah, there we take it in every night. <clears throat> nope. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone have any questions? <laughs> Anyone have any questions? No. I thought it was going on the roof. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're gonna sign up. Thank you. You can have a seat. Thank you. Does any does anyone want to speak in favor of this? First call? Second call. Here we go. Oh. Anything corresponds to nothing in here. Uh, right. Anyone opposed when decided? First call? Second call? Third call? False. 
Is it, what's, what's the nature of the business? Um, CBD green fantasy. Okay. Yeah, so is there no exterior sign on the building? No, they, they, they want to put a full sign. No, no, I know, but is there no exterior sign on the building? Oh, uh, there's a couple on there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we'd have them up and down the side. Yeah. yeah. Because what's going to happen is you're going to end up with yeah. them everywhere. everywhere. And then, uh, you know, when you get kicked around the snowstorm, uh, yeah. I'm not a sign guy anyway. But I'm, not a, I'm not in favor of this. All right, can I have a motion then? ZBA 2282, Roland Seminary, first <coughs> the premise to erect the sandwich time board on the premise number 541 Washington Street. When do you make a motion to deny the bill? That's the premise. Second. On the, on the motion, and on all in favor? Aye. Aye. It's been denied. Further on the tonight's old business. So, we're going to go down. New business. New business. It is the uh, programmatic plan to construct a second floor addition <coughs> in the farmer's portion of the ninth cap. The applicant will represent here. How you doing? Name and address for the record. My name is David Fuller. Speak up. Dave McFuller, 19 Seymour Street. Perfect, thank you. Why don't you explain what you want to do in your home? So it's an existing cape with uh, two bedrooms, and one full bath on the second floor. David Nicola for a variance finding to construct a second floor addition on the farmer's porch on the premise number 9, Taft Street, Quincy, and make a motion to grant the variance. Second. On the motion, and then all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Come on. I think you're back up here, though. <laughs> you're all set. You're all set. Oh, the next one. Yeah, yeah, no, no, the next one's going to be right now, so you can stay right up there. Thank you. DBA 2287. David Nicola. For variance finding, to remove the roof and construct a second floor addition of the premises of 82 Pontiac Road. You have the floor of the name and the address of the record. Getting the floor of 19 Seymour Street. All right. David, you get the floor. What do you want to do here? I'll just existing cable with no living space above. Two buildings on the first floor. Remove the roof, construct a second floor addition. Three what are you going to have downstairs? You're going to have five bedrooms now in that house? Or are you changing any of the rooms downstairs? 
yeah, we're um, removing one bedroom on the first floor. Right, that's what I want to get. Yeah, uh, make things work. Thank you. Any questions? I've got a really small little thing. Yeah. 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 Anyone opposed on the side? Second call? Third call? Call if I hear you close. Vote? Yeah, yeah. That's only three. No, it's a damn office now. Yeah. yeah. So I still three bad results there. I'll be voting in favor. Anyone else? I'm in favor. In favor. Same. Yeah. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, ZBA 2287, David Nicola, for a variance finding to remove the roof and construct a second floor addition on the premise number of <coughs> Pontiac Road, Quincy, and make a motion to grant the variance finding. Second, anyone? Second. Motion? Second. 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 Michael Yen for finding to use the building for child care purposes in the premises 282 building dwellers. The applicant and the representative chair. Up, oh, name and address for the record, please. 282 all buildings rule. Huh? And your name? 2 buildings rule. Your yeah. name? Name and address. Oh, name, and address. name and address for the record. Michael Young, he said. I didn't hear him. So we got a thing here, and I was talking. You say your name and address again, please. Uh, my name is Michael Young, and then uh, it's for 282 Building Road. Okay, tell us what you want to do. So we are looking to put a child care center in here. Uh, originally it was a food pantry, yeah. and we bought building, we want to bake in. Did and you just buy that? We bought the buildings. Just recently? Um, 2019. Right. And how many, how many, Children, you plan on having? Well, um, my regulations is 35 kids. How many? Well, 35 square feet per kid, per kid. So we're looking to put in maybe 28 okay. kids. Okay. What are you doing for parking for the people that work there? Yeah, that's a big concern for us too because we have people that might be driving, but most of them are people who work with us because of the nonprofit. So mm -hmm. Most of the high schools that we work with, they are local, Quincy locals, and mm -hmm. a lot of them take the bus. So we have a bus stop right outside. Mm -hmm. It's two uh, two one two level, and uh, it goes straight from North Quincy Station to uh, Quincy Center. And uh, a lot of us actually bike and walk, mm -hmm. and most of them don't drive. And a lot of us actually we live in Quincy, so we don't really have to drive much. What ones that do? Can you, can you park them off site? Uh, yeah, there are actually parking out there, I believe. Um, if you look into yep. um, the park plan, mm -hmm. it's probably included with most parking out there. And we don't offer it overnight, so most of the people will be leaving around 6 o'clock at the very latest. Right. How many people do you plan on employing if you um, get the max? Well, if we get the max, about 28, then we'll probably need about 3 staff. Oh, okay. Yeah. I have no further questions. You run a child care center now? Or <coughs> okay. We already have one of the location, so. Okay. And where is that location? Is it in Quincy or is it in Quincy? Right. It's about two screens away from us. Cool. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. 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 Thank our staff members, our policy is basically we have to hand kids, hand kids over to parents with our staff in presence. So in a way, it smooths um, the whole process. And we make sure the kids get in the car, get in the car, and they, they go home. <laughs> and when they come in, the parents drop them off to us, uh, to our staff team, and then we pick them up. So traffic-wise, uh, safety-wise, it's that's what it is. That's the process. Short period of time where you have yeah, very short. Presentation is very nice. Are you going to consolidate the other operation into this one? Uh, no, we're actually expanding into this one. Okay. 
Uh, and how many do you have at the other one? 22 years. 20 kids. How many kids have you? Kids? 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 Right now, we have about 60. Um, oh. uh, okay. Six zero? Six zero. That's a big one. Mm -hmm. uh, no further questions. Thanks. You can have a seat. Thank you. Does anyone want to speak in favor? First off, second call, third call, close. Is there anything to call? I have uh, I want to hear from the DPW there to review the above reference budget and have no comments. For anyone opposed or undecided, we step forward and name an address or record please. Anita Milano, 299 Billings Road. I'm opposed to it because, first of all, there's no yard there for children to play. Second of all, there's no windows. There's tiny little windows. There's no parking, that's what I'm concerned about. Mm -hmm. It's a very busy street on the front of Vassal mm -hmm. and Billing Road. Mm -hmm. I live on Billing Road, I know what the traffic is. And I have, I've just been widowed, and I have a lot of people coming to visit me, and I know that they're park, going to park in front of my house, I'm right across the street. And I don't need that. And first of all, oh, there's, a, there's a bus stop there, there's a bus stop, and a hybrid right in front of it. So there's no parking in front of it on Billings Road. They can't park on Vassal Street, it's a very narrow street. So where are they going to park? That's my question. It, I'm sorry, because I couldn't hear him say where the parking was going to be. And no one's going to park there as far as he's concerned, because they all drive bicycles, and they live in Quincy, and they all take the seat. Oh, the workers? Yeah. Well, what about the people dropping the children off? They're going to pull up on a car, drop the child off. Very dangerous street. Very dangerous. I know. I, to do that. I know. I went down there three times and sat there okay. once. You see what the building is. I know exactly. It's a little hole in the wall. So there's no, no yard for the children to play in. Where are they going to play? That's not my problem. Well, you know, I don't think it's safe, first of all, for the children, and I don't think it's safe for anybody else around in the area. Yes. So. I think we'll approve it or whatever, but I don't approve it. So. I hear you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else opposed to one inside? I have a letter here from uh, someone on Bassett Street. Vice Field. Read it into the record. From uh, Karen Murphy, 117 Bassett Street. Uh, opposed, not confused. No non-conforming use that grandfathers is in. Um, violation of rules is acceptable, then you cannot play favorites, and everyone should be allowed the same courtesy. Investment for personal gains of new ownership will invade and disrupt the local community homeowners of their well-being of their existence, which is supposed to be protected under the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Commercial use will now intrude on the residential existing landscape of transparent way of life as we live now. Population quality control situation will create pressure problems both physically and mentally. Physically, buildings and vassal intersections very busy as it stands now. Traffic congestion will get worse. Traffic details will have to be assigned for safety reasons. A lot of dog walkers walking to the beach. A child could get bit on the safety issue. Mentally, the overflow of traffic could be more congested in a small residential area. Is asking too much for the people that live here and drive frequently. As well, the zoning board of Quincy's up here. It's here to uphold the community concerns and well-being of the residents which are that we have met to keep the necessary purpose of zoning restrictions of the property and what you're listening to. Last call. Anyone at Paul's on the side? Call up out of here and call. You know, they have some things there if you can pop in the car, if you can do that, if you can work out. Uh, you know, I drop off and pick up the take about Probably about 90 seconds to pick up your child and you fall and you go in there. And when you knock on the door, they're at the door for you. So it takes them, you know, another minute and a half, 90 seconds to pick them up. So I'm going to be voting in favor. I think it's a decent building where, where the kids need a place to go. They have to have a child. <coughs> so.
father of young kids, and with many greens, there's not enough trout yet. So I'm in favor. I'm in favor as well. I am as well. I'm cool. Okay. Could I uh, have a motion for you? Mr. Chairman, ZBA 2291, Marco Yan for finding to use the building for child care purposes on the premise number 282 Billings Road, Quincy, and make a motion to grant the variance. Second. On a motion, stand on all in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yes. Opposed. Do we need a motion? Uh, I'm in agreement. <coughs> That's my new word in 2023 because it came off there. Thank you, guys. Thanks. DBA 2296. John Galligan, a variance finance to add a 14 by 19 addition to the existing building to create a walk up, a quick serve ice cream window on the premise now 120, uh, 1269 C. Which is off the hook restaurant. Go ahead and name address for the record, please. John Galligan, 40 Crosby Street, Quincy. And yeah, why don't you tell us what you want to do here and go through your plan? Okay. Um, I am the owner of Alpha Fire and Grill. Uh, my family and I also own How Many Scoops. Um, unfortunately, with changes in the neighborhood, uh, the owner of that land has, you know, seeks to develop, which would remove the business, already had to remove the business from that building. Um, you know, this was my wife and I first business in Housenet. Uh, we took it over from a family member. Um, it's definitely something that the neighborhood, you know, has responded to well. Um, I think it's an asset to the neighborhood to have these small businesses down there. Um, with the removal of 1092 C Street, where the business currently stands, um, you know, we've been really trying to come up with an idea of how to keep this in the area. Um, how many scoops with the name, obviously we'd like to keep it in house neck, um, but even just along C Street itself, we don't find many places that would be able to relocate. Um, the storefronts just aren't there like they were before. So um, a plan that we were looking to uh, go with is moving it down to off the hook. Uh, we have two sides of the building that provide patio space for our customers. Uh, one side of the building where there is patio space, um, very underused, and it was under a different proposal of doing an outdoor bar down there, um, you know, with neighbor concerns, um, and then also the removal of 1092 C Street, we thought it was best to change our plan here um, and try to get how many scoops down to that location. Um, we are looking to operate the business basically the same way we were operating, operating how many scoops when it was open. Um, it's a seasonal business. It has, you know, hours that, re, that are reduced at the beginning and the end of the season. It is open seven days a week. Um, the plan for the exterior is to use, the, we have a large patio space, um, outdoor area, that we would like to construct a 14 by 19 addition off the side of our building. Um, it would be all obviously up to code and permitted, interior finishes, um, weather tight interior finishes, we grew out to all health code standards. Uh, plumbing and electrical would be determined really more by the layout of the equipment. Once we get it in there, we're able to lay that down a little bit better. Um, the reason we're looking to go with this size is behind the counter, how many scoops was a little bit larger than this, but we figure if we remove a couple pieces of equipment, we can really replicate the business that we had going there without having to recreate uh, or remove things um, to make it detrimental to the business. Um, customers would have full access from the sidewalk on C Street. There is existing fencing up in the area already. We would also ask to have uh, a storage off the side of it as a small walk-in freezer, which typically goes are about four feet, maybe by six feet. Um, lighting is already on the exterior of the building. Like I said, fencing is already on the exterior of the building. Uh, waste and pest control is already set up with the existing building being there. All of that would be reviewed as we get closer to hopefully having this business there. If waste collection needs to be stepped up throughout the week for the season of the ice cream shop, then that's not a problem at all. That's just increasing our service with Republic. Um, pest control, we, we use your bug-in pest control. Um, 
and they're doing you know weekly and monthly inspections as is. Um, parking, you know, we feel that this location gives us a better parking situation, a safer area for families to walk up, um, not right on C Street. Um, so parking would be utilized, the maritime parking lot, parking down by the public landing area, um, and also Brill Field if needed, good area down there. Um, we really feel that bringing this business down to this area, like I said, reduces a few safety concerns that we always have with how many scoops, um, where people, how they access the building. I mean, it is still on C Street, but I just feel like it's that much further down that it's not a school area, it's not by the fire station, um, better sidewalk set up, the public landing is right down the street where customers can grab ice cream and walk down there. Um, we're not asking for any exterior seating right now. We want to utilize this as a walk-up, um, quick service window, along with the idea of like the Dairy Queen over by the Fulford Bridge, where it's a walk-up service for our customers to come up to. Um, again, it's just something that we've thought really hard about on how to do this, and we don't want to lose this business in the area. Um, businesses in Howard Neck are very few and far between right now, and this is, you know, our best and almost only option that we can see out there right now to keep this business going or, you know, open at all. Questions uh, I have. Is any alcohol going to be served? No alcohol will be served. So this will be completely um, separate from off the hook. Customers from the interior of off the hook will not be able to use the side emergency exit. I plan on putting a push bar on that to try to re restrict people from going out that way. They can really gain access only from the front of the building, from the C Street area. So people won't be going in and out? And they will not be going in and not watching them get an ice cream and coming back in to sit at their table. It's, I want to operate this as it's two separate businesses. Okay. Uh, Seating out there, is there going to be any seats that just come serve and, and leave? Come serve and leave. Um, right now, I don't plan on having any seating out there. Um, you know, we've tossed off the idea of maybe along the fence of having a leaning tabletop or something like that, but no seats. There won't be any seats for people to sit right down and eat. Um, there'll be no roof or anything that we put over this area. We're looking to maybe use some of those like sunshade type awnings, you know, during the season to protect people if they're you know walking out there or standing out there trying to eat their ice cream. Yeah, because I know where it was up there it was a tough place. It was tough. It was, it was parking it was even tough sometimes. Yeah. You know, uh, I need some hours of operation to be talking about. I know what the okay. other one, the other one was. So it would, it would line right up with um, you know how many scoops operated. Yeah. Um, it would be seven days a week. Uh, typically, it's open April through October, end of October. Yeah. Um, most hours would be 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. Once you usually get into the fall season, let's say, you know, mid to late September, more towards the last month of operating, we usually reduce hours um, until 8 p.m. And sometimes we also reduce days as well. If we start seeing as we're going down, uh, just less full of customer, depending on what the weather's going to be, sometimes we can just go Thursday to Sunday only and really start to reduce what we're offering, um, keep it limited, and get ready to close down at the end of the season. Uh, 10 p.m., that's only going to be like uh, June, July, and August? So typically, um, sometime in May, so I'd, I'd say safely May through end of August, then there are times where again we move back to nine, then we move back to eight. Um, I mean, during the summer months, you know, the sun's really setting at about eight forty-five. You know, something like that. And honestly, it's it's when you start seeing a lot more flow. I feel like when the sun's out, people are out doing things in their yard, things like that. And then it starts getting darker out is when we start seeing a little bit more flow. Grab a nice thing up again. Yep, things like that. Exactly. Uh, I know you have to have a. There's something here that you have to have stamped uh, on this little roach plan, which you'll get before you get a permit if it does taxes. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's some changes to that over time, and right. he's, he's got the right. Right. Uh, Those are my questions. Uh, you know, I know, uh, I got one other question. Did you give my cell phone number away to anybody? Okay. My phone rang for the last month. No. And half of it was you. 
So I'm saying someone's either spreading my on that quick little blank. No, definitely not me. And I'm seeing all uh, these numbers. I don't know. I'll try to do all my, you know, advertising and, and promoting right through Facebook. I do encourage them to send emails in, um, you know, to the counselor and to the board. I wouldn't give out anyone's phone number. That's all I ask. Someone. That was me. <laughs> 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 yeah. I mean, half the half house neck has your phone number. What are you worried about? <laughs> yeah, Give it to the other half. <laughs> 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 half the other one. Right. I, I, so, just to confirm, no outside seating right now. No outdoor seating. No. Oh, we never had outdoor seating with this. Really, as is, um, there was more of a little public park next door to the existing location, so they utilized that. Um, where I hope they utilize the public landing in areas like that to walk down to. If they stand on the open property and eat their ice cream, you know, I mean, it's, it's pretty good sized space out there. It's super oh, rough numbers, you not trying to judge the business or anything like that. It's just rough numbers, like high traffic, or what are we talking, 100 people a day, 200? I mean, like rough. It, it's not even, or we even? No, I mean, it's. On average, we're probably less than that, right? I would say definitely less than that. Yeah. Um, I think it will bring a little bit different of a flow because of off the hook is there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, and, and there's usually a heavier number at a specific time, which is like the seven to eight o'clock time at the after dinner time, sure. you know? And then as the night goes on, you kind of, you know, you get more locals that trickle in towards the end of the night. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would say if you're going from, you know, 75 to 100 tickets, seals in night, that's, you know, those three numbers for us. Thank you. Outstanding fees or fines owed to the city? No, no they're not. Uh, there was one put out. I have the receipt for that. It was paid the day off the fine that was issued as well. What, what was that for? Um, we started doing some work on the property, um, kind of jumped the gun on the first project we were going for, um, dropped myself in the foot, stopped everything right away, and tried to kind of regroup and you know take the right approach going back into that outdoor bar area. Uh, which I think, you know, we really have the right approach going forward, except for some neighbor concerns that we couldn't agree on. Thanks. Any other questions? The one issue I have here is like a question about entertainment. Do you do, do stuff inside the restaurant? Inside the restaurant, yes. Yeah, the, in the exterior area, there would be no entertainment yeah, offered. But I'm saying that, you know, it might cost me to linger a bit if the music's there and it's loud or it's entertaining for the Molly crowd. So, I mean, typically our entertainment is Friday and Saturday nights only. Um, you know, 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock, all interior, all inside. We don't open any windows or anything like that. We really try to, it's like solo, maybe duo acoustic, so it's, it's not bands and loud, you know, music that's driving people to the area. I mean, I want to obviously drive customers to the area, but, um, and even people sitting on our patio, I would say, on the existing patio that we have, very, music very dull there. And this would be on the opposite side of the building as well. Thank you. You can have a seat. Is there anyone that's opposed? <clears throat> anyone opposed? First call.
will severely impede the peaceful enjoyment of me and my tenants. There has not been a community meeting. No meeting with the abutters to date. The applicant did not send me a, did send me a text message back on August 12th. I have included a print out of that text message. Um, she respectfully requests the board to propose this hearing that I be and that I be given a copy of the application, stage plan, and any other submittals yeah. to the review before our hearing is rescheduled. Um, there's more to the letter. I believe you all have. You want me to read it? Okay. After receiving notice of the hearing, I went to the building inspector's office and requested that the person in charge of the zoning files allow me to view the application and plans filed by John Gallagher for his proposal. I was told there are no documents on file. After a discussion with a friend familiar with the Zoning Act who told me there must be an application and stamp plan on file, I returned to the zoning person and was told again there was no application. I left my name and phone number in case you found a plan, no meeting, no file, no plan, no application. Please postpone this hearing until I can be given a uh, copy of the application, stamp plans, and any other submittals to review before a hearing is rescheduled. I consulted with an attorney. He was unable to attend tonight. And then there's a timeline of what has taken place up until today. Uh, May 3rd, the addition was filled, no permit obtained. May 8th, the building inspector was down uh, at the illegal addition and made them stop working. August 6, 2022, a stop work order issued by the city of Quincy. Um, show no addition of uh, uh, plans on file at the ZBA website. Show no addition of our area, but the addition was built in operation. Uh, and then there were two events, the founder round up and the shower event. So the next one has a um, text message from John to Peggy, and then a response from another, from Peggy to John, and John to Peggy. Can we read My concern is just um, trash pickup. I would think there would be a lot more trash um, with napkins and um, the influx of people. Um, and of course, parking. Um. I don't know if you guys received this picture, but one of Peggy's main concerns was there is an addition um, constructed area that is already built by the permit. And, That's what um, you're applying for. Okay, and then I know that um, the first proposal he took off the table, well, the other question that I had was, is there already seating out there? Because I know that was one of the points. And um, so there's not there is seating out there. Right, so if there is seating out there now, it will be removed. All removed. Okay, and then the other thing was, um, just to give people a wider lens of the visual perspective, there used to be 20 foot high bushes there, so that created a buffer between her property and the, um, the constructed area. And now those have been removed and there's a fence there, so obviously um, the fence isn't 20 feet high, so that also doesn't create this. How high is that fence? I'm trying to think. Is it like eight feet? Probably. Um, the thing is, is I'd like to have this postponed, please. And, and what reason? I, I, I have never seen the plans or any of that. I've been to the um, 55 C Street numerous times. I had a um, meeting with the mayor. The plans, the plans are exactly what you're looking at. Right at that food, they're going to build a right. place for an ice. The noise, the rats. But that everything. has nothing to do with that has nothing to do with what's going to happen. What we're here for? Can he build it or can he build? It? That's what we're here for. I I and that's I'm the best part. And help. you are a part. I, I understand. I understand. I've been on my property for 30 years. Right. right. And right. now it's my time, and right. I, I, you have to listen to everything. I mean, they had plenty of issues. Do you live upstairs in that? I do not live upstairs, but I intend on living there when I retire. I just, I just asked the question, because not. I've never seen you there. Right. Well, it, right. That, it's still my property. I, I know. It's a business right. property. Right. right. Exactly. And I am off of small businesses, right. but not outdoors. There's no outdoors down there, and there shouldn't be. I mean, everyone deserves their peace and quiet. Right. 
and this is just not right. Um, everything that I've been through, you I shut off your phone. Whoever I've had the phone numerous going meetings, here. I've missed numerous days at work. Um, the the thing is, is that. I mean, you're going to have children running around. He had a lot of issues up at um, how many scoops with the back, um, out sitting out in the back with the, the kids playing, the noise, some uh, arguments with the, the uh, woman that lived next door on the driveway. Um, he had vandalizing. Um, he had trouble with the, um, the outdoor speakers, the noise. Um, I guess they cut their speakers. So I don't want his problems to become my problems. Mm -hmm. I just want to live peacefully, mm -hmm. and I deserve that. Mm -hmm. And I am all for John, and I have always supported him. I've had cancer walks, I've had everything there for 30 years. I've been there through three owners. Right. And it's a safety issue. I can't even back out of my driveway. There's going to be kids running around, and there absolutely will be. And who wants to put, uh, I don't care if it's it's still on the same property, an uh, ice cream parlor with a bar room. And it is a bar, and I know it's a restaurant, but it's also a bar where alcohol is served, where children are going to be. I am so upset about this. I don't know what to say. I mean, you can't get in the building from the ice cream. You walk in there and you walk out. The only just thing like on that was side a, Just like was, it was a building by itself. Right. That's the only thing on that side of the property was the seven foot, 20 foot trees and also just the emergency exit only. Right. That is it. Right. And that's all that should be. I should be able to live peacefully. I don't want to have to hear all that. He's already moved the dumpster. He got away with selling his, his um, the uh, parking lot that was never supposed to be split. I never was opposed to that. And then they, the board approved it. I never thought that would Where was it? Behind it? On the, on, on no, the three pieces of property, when I purchased my property, those three pieces were supposed to stay together, the house, the bar, and the property, and the parking lot. And Correct. They, right. Correct. So they've got to Correct. split it. So now the right. dumpster that was eventually, well, that was over there, got moved to the north side of the building, which was fine. It was never an issue with myself right. or the boys, the other abutters. Now he has it up over my side, the back of, in the back of the building. So the smell, the rats, and just everything. Like my, you should be able to enjoy yourself. We're all there. We're, we're there for the summer. So why isn't it picked up more then? If there's anything of smell, why isn't it picked up more? I don't know. I don't. I, I don't think That's I should why have we to have, have counselors it. here. Right. I've say, been. This thing stinks. Okay. Well, I've been to up. the um, the health department numerous times. And they they said that they would help with the smell and everything. I shouldn't have to have the dumpster over my side. It was never there. He never got permission to move it from that side over to my side. I mean, I just want to live happily here. I don't want to have to deal with all this, and I shouldn't. I've worked my. I've worked. Overnights, holidays you? without my family's like Everybody no. Does. Everybody yeah. Did that. Yeah. Right. Right. We all do. I get it. I get it. I would like to have see if we could postpone this. Yeah. I'm not going to ask for person. There's four other members. Yet. I think this came up. It's in front of us. I don't see the reason for a postponement unless the council has anything to say. Copy that back to their own. All right. All right. Thank you. Uh, I have, uh, that is one, two, three, four letters of support there, two, that's me. Again. Could I say one more thing? Sure, go Could ahead. I have um, all of that read into um, the um, right. record, please? Everything's going to be in the book. Thank you. Yeah, yep. I gave, I gave her my coffee. Yeah. You can steal my property and know where to get it. Uh, and there's four letters of support. Is there anyone else opposed to undecided? Second call. Last call? Third call. Closed. Hey, we'll let it hear from the uh, DPW 1269 KCBA 2296 review. Above reference project and have no comments. Council, you're up. <coughs> David McCarthy for you, Whitney Road, Board One Council. Uh, the first thing, and I'm very familiar with Peggy and, and John and, and the situation. Uh, John uh, made a, a point that the building is being changed where uh, how many scoops is. So uh, <coughs> the window option is the option for House Next or their ice cream shop goes, goes away. Uh, I know that there was a letter that uh, 
Commissioner Duca had put out. And I just wanted to be, you know, clear that uh, Mr. Galligan had met, a little confusion on my part, had met everything that was asked from Jay before he left in regards to fines. I think Mr. Kimmel talked about fines, etc. Was everything I taken talked care to Mr. Duca today about this because that's what I heard. There was still an outstanding fine. Uh, not true. Okay. Fine, the fine was paid. The only thing that he had is not a stamp drawing. His drawing isn't stamped yet. The changes that he did when he put on the uh, freezer in the back. That has to, so Mr. Uh, Brian LaRoche, Mr. LaRoche has to sign. So we don't have that yet? No, that's the only, but that he gets out when he gets his permit. As long as he, he said it's drawn to scale. So, so everything that's in front of you right now on a typical zoning evening is intact? That we need. That you need. Right. Okay. Um, it's a business B area that I know that you folks and I have chatted about business B down there all the time right. and trying to keep, keep the commercial component. At the same time, I worry about it a little bit because right. people want to do different things down there with, yeah. with the business B and, and make big things, which I don't want to happen down in the house. Now, the, how many scoops location, in my opinion, was a tough location all it the was. time? I think it and <clears throat> it seemed to work. I know that he had... Um, the seating in the back and he had some issues and I know John had made adjustments and those issues seemed to go away. They might flare up once in a while because of where he was at in regards to um, that corner spot which was the greatest. We're talking about an ice cream window really when it all comes down to it. I, I know and I, I understand um, the abundance situation. Um, there's other locations in the city that went to patios, that went to bars, outdoor bars, outdoor eating areas, etc. I can reel them off. Uh, he went away from that whole bar scenario, which we knew was going to be a little iffy because it was tight. I think, uh, in, in my opinion, that the walk-up window would work. I would support the walk-up window um, with no seating. I would talk to. Um, uh, the health um, commissioner mm -hmm. about the dumpster. Yep. I know that the dumpster got moved. I don't know if that got legitimately moved or that's something that would have to come back to you folks. I want to make sure yep. in regards to what um, the abutter had said right. that everything the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed and everything's done, or I would say should be postponed until everything's done, everything's looked at. I think John has done, he enclosed that dumpster. I was down there many times trying to take a look at it. And again, it's a walk-up window for ice cream. Um, Mr. Riddell had mentioned how many people, and I think depending on a hot day or a cold day or whatever down there, it goes up and down. It'll probably be increased a little bit, in my opinion, too, because of our restaurant. Um, it's a good thing to have in that area. Just like when we deal with things out on the peninsula in Squam, they need, as we talked about, keeping that business component, commercial component, in the building where how many scoops is. They, they'll, they, every day, seem to lose a little bit more down the house neck um, from what we had years ago when there were variety stores everywhere. So, you know, so I look at it at one more, one more negative thing if they lose that, that that ice cream component, which I thought was a pretty good idea to have a window and be able to have a meal, have an ice cream, there's plenty of parking, and um, you know, enjoy the public land and et cetera, take a walk, so. We got the new building going in there too, which is gonna bring, you know, some other area will, will, but, but again, I understand it, but, we, I have other places where, a few places in my ward where patios went in with bar rooms and were closer than this, and I go back and forth, and this is an ice cream window, not a bar. So I, uh, I hope it can all be worked out peacefully. I think it's a, a very good option for Howes Neck and for the kids down there. And um, 
again, it, it, it dwindles in, in the commercial component down there. This would just be one less thing that they have down there because um, there isn't any options really. And it'd be very good for the, for the folks at Hounds Neck to, to have this option. They can all walk to it if they want or they can, they can drive down. So I just want to make sure um, what Peggy talked about postponing that everything we have is what we're supposed to have and because I knew there was there was a, um, a question on that mm -hmm. so that's what I did today because that's what I thought I thought we were going to postpone this and said fine we're still all uh, the fine for the fine right. or whatever. I don't know. and again that's I'm really up to the board yeah. I, 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 I understand both sides yeah. um, and um, um, you know uh, moves have been made by the applicant to try to lessen the activity down there from the bar scene to the ice cream scene. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I just want to make sure everything is legit and paid for and done before we move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? You can favor? Thank you. Thank you. My name is Kelly Gallagher, I'm uh, at 125 Turner Street. I am one of the original people that um, started on these groups in 2015. Um, I can speak to two things this night. I have some sentimental reasons to speak to you, but I think everybody's on the same page as far as wanting how many groups to stay. Um, I can also speak to you, more importantly, I think tonight, because I actually rent a spot that is directly next to the area in question. I'm on the street living business out of the bottom floor of Peggy's building. Um, I have been there for almost four years. I keep my windows open because I need to, because I have heat and fumes um, all day while I'm working there. I have never once had an order. I have never once seen a rat. <laughs> um, I, the fence that is there, I think I, I could be off, is probably about the same height as the trees that some were living and some were dead, which is, I think, the reason why they came out in the first place. Um, I speak often to the actual tenants that live upstairs. Um, I did ask them about how many scoops, but we talked over the years about events over and off the hook and comings and goings. They have nothing but good things to say about the things they have seen, the crowd, the noise, the, how everything is handled. Um, you know, so I understand Peggy's concerns. Going back to the fact that I used to run how many scoops, I can tell you um, we generated enough trash to fill two trash barrels a week. There's approximately a half a bag of trash that would go out and we didn't even actually have a dumpster because we couldn't get a dumpster down in the back. Um, and they, two trash barrels and a pile of recycling um, that goes out every week. It's still the same, maybe a little more because it's a little busier than when I was there. Um, but they're not going to be generating, you know, dozens of bags of trash a day. Um, as far as the location, um, when Scott and Carlton and I opened How Many Scoops in 2015, we looked high and low in House Neck. <laughs> there were more places then, way less places now, and there weren't good pickings then. So, John's options, or anybody's options, to have an existing little family business in House Neck are pretty slim to none. Um, I think this plan is a good plan, knowing the inner workings of how the ice cream shop runs. I've seen John's you know, floor plan. It will fit everything that they do now. Um, when we first opened back in 2015, we did have 10 seats in how many scoops. That went away because of COVID, and it proved to us that we didn't really need them. That operation 
at 1092 seasonally. I still call it 1094 because it's a double, <laughs> but has been operating pretty much as a walk-up window since COVID. Um, the complaints that um, Peggy spoke about as far as the tenants um, only came when we put those seats outside because of COVID. There is a parking lot back there and an easement for the people that own the houses next door, which is really where the problem came from. Um, right. Peggy spoke of vandalism. Um, anybody that vandalized the area, I can't really speak to. I mean, if a person comes out of an establishment and does something on their own, it's not like the people that work there were vandalizing anything. Um, so, both places, I mean, how many scoops was run for years with no issues, clean, um, you know, you can go back and ask the health department, they never had a single issue. Um, John, currently at Off the Hook, runs a clean establishment, I don't think, besides the issues that have been raised because of the, you know, freestanding building that we didn't get the permit for that definitely raised issues as far as that is concerned. His business has not any issues. No noise complaints, no, you know, out of control patrons, no sanitary violations, none of that exists. Um, the issues that Peggy is speaking of are because yes, John built that little shed to hopefully put a bar out there and you know, definitely took a few steps that he shouldn't have. He has fixed that situation, and I don't think that this should be judged on that one mistake. This can be a very, you know, nice business for the neighborhood. It has, it's a, since 2015, it has really become a community favorite for people, not just in housing, they come down, they, you know, so, I would hate for the kids to lose it. I would hate for the adults to lose it. Everybody likes ice cream. Um, and, you know, one more thing over the years, um, and I know John continues to do this, but how many scoops were started um, to give back to the community, but countless, countless things that have been donated, countless, countless jobs that have been given to neighborhood kids, um, first dates, first kisses, like you name it. Um, first ice creams. Um, it's a big deal. If this is not approved, there is no other. Like it, it, you can look up and down C Street. Good luck. If you can find a place, you certainly can't afford it running an ice cream shop. So, um, you know, I respectfully request that everybody just kind of doesn't postpone, makes a decision in favor of this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. I know, I was going to try not to speak for 2023, but I couldn't do it. Couldn't last John Rotterfield, 62 Grand Mall Road, I first want to disclose that um, I do like ice cream. And, um, you know, I just want to say that this is kind of a win-win because um, this is way better than having an outdoor bar next to someone's house. Um, this is something where maybe someone's going to the bar and they don't drink. Now that person can go get an ice cream. So um, I just want to say that I'm in favor of this and I look forward to two scoops of black raspberry and sugar. Thank you. Thank you, John. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Andrew, for the record. <clears throat> What number? Um, 66 Just to have, just want to clarify two things. Mm -hmm. um, not so much in favor, not in favor type. But I, I always sort of understand the box. So that portion of the barrel side, that's no one. No, right. No one. Right. Right. Okay. And so the no, 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 no. So the building of this new 14 foot patio is just a window. We're going to build it off the building. The building that's there, they're going to build it in the back. Build it in the back. Uh, and I'll guarantee you, the part that's half built is probably part of it. So you'll go back. Okay. So um, <coughs> I have it stated again separate to walk out and no seats. No seats. Um, and so that area. 
can or cannot choose to use the seats for an activity, they will go to corrective activities or is that just not it's going to be, it's going to be a scoop of okay. 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 So okay. How many scoops? Sure. That's my head. That's fine. And then my only last question is concern, because I drive that a million times a day now with my mom's in the back. Is it traffic? Where is the parking going to be? Is it, I just don't know. Is it going to you know, be on my side and the buses? That's my only concern. I have people trouble elderly. Shouldn't probably be driving still. And then ambulances that often would come. So I'm just wondering. 90% of the people are guaranteed that went off the hook walking. I agree. I live in I And I'd watch it. I'd go up there. I'd watch the truck. Right. What was going on. Me, I live up top and they own two ladies in a walk. So right. I drive and park on, on the side street. So those are the right. Right. Oh, there's parking. There's parking down by the pier. There's parking down in Fensmere. There's parking in, in the winter time. All that whole trail park. That's the worst thing I got a warning. I got a warning back in the trail park. Huh? I got a warning in the trail park. Sam couldn't drive. I'm well, going to get in boating season. You do because you're probably in a double trail up where they put trailers. So they don't have a lot of parking. Yeah, it was you. Yeah. Just bring it up. So that's really all I just wanted to like, yep. what I'm sure what's happening to Davis too. Yep. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Call up out of hearing folks. Just want to ask one question. Sure. Steve Stone, 215 Winthrop. I'm not opposed to this at all, but I want to ask something about the pond. That's what I want to know yep. about. You know, it comes summertime. It's, it's ice cream. People have to drive down here get an ice cream, which is fine. But now you got all the trailers parking. You got the bar parking, ice cream. The yacht club's going to have stuff going on here. <clears throat> we were going to park all the cars. I'd say we get rid of all the boats. Don't let, you know, shut the ramp down. Or I would stop mowing down the, you know, all the buildings there and just make them walk park instead of putting in maritime centers and all this other stuff. We need parking down. So yeah. I think you should think about that. That's all I'm saying. All right, John. Yeah. Steve? Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Good to see you. It wasn't your last four, right? No, it's not. Uh, it's not. We have two four letters. Yeah, you got four letters. I just want to put it in. Yeah, we'll put it. You can come up while I'm reading it. Uh, Christine Cody, 297C Street, when the like to suppress, express my support. Family's a long time supporter of both all the and how many scoops. I think the proposal is a great one. The location is more accessible and has more parking than Fry. Uh, Todd and Rachel O'Donoghue, 853 C Street. Wanted to extend our support to create a walk up quick service ice cream window. Business provided many excellent pro products and service to the housing and community. And we'd love to continue to have how many scoops service our grateful neighborhood. Uh, Jennifer Billard, 299 Elmwood Ave. Just like to express my support for John Gallagher and his request for how many scoops at the new location. I've, re I've frequented uh, the location over the years and I've noticed how popular it is with the locals and pals next. Uh, there aren't any other small business ice cream shops in the area, uh, so far have John and off the hook for almost a year now. I can say that he truly cares not only about the customers but the neighborhood. It's courteous of all events and been in Curtis and all of his events have been with the intention of bringing people together and have them respectful. I can't think of a better way for our neighborhood kids to celebrate summer than to stop by how many scoops for an ice cream after taking a dip in the ocean. I sincerely hope you'll approve. Uh, and then Jill Hockney of 938 C Street um, expressed support. Uh, I was next to the community that encouraged people supporting neighbors and helping each other when we can. When I was sick a few years ago and I'm able to leave my house, I had how many scoops? I had called how many scoops to see if I could pay over the phone and have someone pick up my order. Shortly after I received a message from the owner that was my order was at the doorstep. The owner had delivered it to my door. This is how it meant. My husband works nights and called how many scoops late one night. It was after seven the shop had closed. But the owner was there and answered the phone and asked him to come down and get a nice cream. Even though it already closed. This is how it meant. Off the hook has been a successful Keeping our community engaged with one another and continue to provide a safe and local place for residents to get something to eat, as well as providing many jobs to people. The family-owned restaurants looking to add, to add more ways to 
serving its community by reopening common schools. I express my full support. Thank you. Name and address for record, please. Um, Meredith Ernest and Mandel. Um, resident of Hallisnet for 14 years. Um, I worked summer with John at how many students have to develop for how clean it is. Um, no problems with patrons. We never had any trouble with the kids coming in and out. I also have three kids that love how many scoops. It's a bartering tool in the summer. You get an ice cream, you can clean the room. Um, my 12 year old is hoping it reopens so he can get a job in a couple of years. We have a dog that enjoys the pup cups. Um, we walk. I think a lot of people are worried about parking, but even as an employee there, more people often than not walk. Um, so I don't think parking parking would be an issue at all. And see, we go to all the hook um, as a family to eat. I can see us going next door and getting an ice cream. I don't understand the bar having an issue. I think people that if you go to drink, you're not going to go and get the vanilla ice cream either. So I think those are two separate entities and if you walk out the window. So I just wanted to come and give my support tonight. Thank you. Oh, I probably a hearing close. Uh, you know, I understand where you're coming from, but I also understand that that, that business, and I live now, 97% of the people, I'd say 95% of the people probably walk uh, and pick up their rice. And it's, there's not going to be a parking problem. There's not going to be a parking problem because of, because they're going to have a scoop of an ice cream. Uh, and for everything else that, that John's done in business, and how can you turn the shop and help people uh, I'd just like you guys to think of that too. He's, 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 a, he's a good guy to have in the house and have the business. Uh, we just lost a couple stores already. We have, we have John's place and, and we got uh, Bernie's store. And you got, <coughs> what, you got a bar. That's all that's left now. That's it. Two bars, a restaurant, well, a bar restaurant, a bar. And, um, Bernie's place where you can go get milk and bread and whatever else you need if you're stuck. It's not the house down there. And it's a, it's a big community. It needs this. It really does. And I'm going to speak in quiet tonight. We need that in the house now. And part of that, part of that whole thing of the family life, the family life is going out together, getting a nice thing with your kids or your grandmother or your mother or your whatever. You're going out and sitting down and talking 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Put a nice community here and you start gap. That's what it's all about. So I'm going to be more against. Okay. Thank you. I have, uh, Mr. Gallon, I just have one question just for my own. Sorry, I'm talking. <coughs> Can I bring you here? Oh, of course. So we're trying to figure out, is this going to be the ice cream window? Um, Marty was saying it's going to go off the back. I don't have it. Yeah, so this should have been submitted on the back. Of it Hold on. Yeah. Okay. So this, yeah, basically what you are looking at here um, was the potential bar area, which probably goes about half of that. So I'm extending it to the corner of the building, squaring that all off. It doesn't come out any further on this side here. Where's the window? And the window would be the same setup. The window would be right here on this front side here. So yeah, go. It's a, a, not about double in size, maybe a little bit less than that. Um, and then they gain access from the front of the building, walking straight up into this. That's about as I see from the old plan, about 15 and a half feet. From building the fence, yeah. From building the fence, it's probably about I think 16 feet. To building the property line, it might be about 17 or 18. Walkway. Yep, it's already mostly constructed during the emergency exit that was there, so we just extend that up to the window. Yeah. Like this has to have it having it down here, the longer it's even better. And, and I, I think no cables, soon solves the gathering problem. You know, right. Birthday parties, that type of nonsense. And now, uh, and you know, I think it's very good. I'm going to deliver it to you. Let's go, Brian. I'll be your favorite. Have a good time. DBA 2296, John Delegan for variance 5, United 14 by 19, in addition to the existing building, and create a walk-up quick service ice cream window. The premise number 1269C Street. Please be a minute motion to grant the variance 5. Second. No motion. Stand down. All in favor? Aye. Aye.
Thank you, John. And he's keeping a business in the house back. Thank you, Tom.
property that we're discussing tonight is 107 and 111 Cross Street, West Quincy. Uh, Cross Street runs from uh, Quarry Street all the way across down to Furnaceburg Parkway and then across uh, Furnaceburg Parkway to uh, towards the highway. Uh, this is the end of uh, Cross Street as it approaches the highway. Um, this property is a 12,314 square foot parcel. It's located in a business D zoning district, also within the flood pit plain district. Um, and the property right now um, is two large large homes. Show them the existing uh, land as well. No, it's okay. Um, that actually, that is actually, yeah, that, that um, shows showing the. Oh, this is the. Uh, yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry. No, that's all. I just call it a yeah. Okay. Uh, the existing site plan shows the existing uh, properties on the site, and interestingly, if you if you look and match it up with the proposed, the changes are not that dramatic as far as site uh, um, is site uh, coverage is. is uh, um, the existing single, the existing properties are a large two-family shed and, and other uh, structures in the rear, and then there's a large single-family. Both of those homes, existing homes, are actually not floodplain compliant. They have, they have, they have, um, their first floor level is well within the floodplain district, and as you may be aware, the city has actually proposed a, a, a pump station in the rear. Uh, years ago, and I don't know if, if, if how many of you were here, but I permitted a six-unit uh, building on the other street, on the opposite side of the of the, um, of the pump station site, um, and that's been built since. Uh, this is a, a proposal that we think fits better in the neighborhood in a, in a townhouse-style development as opposed to an apartment-style development, where because this uh, street is essentially uh, smaller, single-family, two-family uh, uh, properties. Uh, so what's being proposed tonight is to remove the two existing structures, construct five new townhouse style units. We'll have one egress from uh, Cross Street into the site. There'll be parking under for two cars for each unit. Yeah. And we've provided two spaces. Actually, this has been redesigned a little bit. There's one space here and one space on that side. And while we were discussing this with the planning board, because we went through the site plan review with the planning board, um, uh, questions were raised or issues were raised by the community both in the number of units that were proposed which was initially seven then reduced to six and now reduced to five and also discussions uh, were raised about setback the building was initially set back only about five feet from the property line now has been pushed back to eight feet we think it's a great new use of the property these are all floodplain compliant units um, they'll provide new housing units within the community. They'll all be privately owned, like many of the homes in the neighborhood. Um, some of the neighbors uh, expressed concerns about this, and we believe that we've addressed all those concerns as we went through the planning board process. Mm -hmm. What we're seeking tonight is a flood plan special permit. A special permit to allow the conversion from business to residential, and also variances. And those variances primarily deal with the setback the unusual shape of this parcel creates uh, a setback <coughs> issue here, and also we have setback issues in the front um, and, uh, and in the rear of the site here as well. Um, and also, this is uh, this would typically require a 14,000 square foot uh, parcel. This is a 12,314 square foot parcel. Uh, not, uh, however, uh, we're actually providing more square feet per. Uh, unit than is required by the ordinance. The ordinance requires 2,000 square feet per unit, providing about 2,300 square feet. So I think it's a great proposal, and we'd ask that the uh, the board support this. Pat's here from uh, the cell uh, If there's any questions about the drainage, or we believe that we would appropriately address drainage. In fact, one of the things that Mr. Um, Lavin uh, provided was an easement across the site to allow the city to, to access the, the pump station in the rear. And that was done at, with no consideration. That was done just to, as, a, as, a, as a friendly neighborhood. It's a 20 foot, 20 foot easement? Right. Yeah. Um, I looked at this first and looked at it. Isn't there just one more house at the end of that street, right? There is. Yeah. And uh, this is Divide, who is oh. who's here tonight, uh, Jim Divide. And uh, he, uh, he's also expressed support of this proposal. He's, he 
job is to try and also raise concerns about the number, and hence why we reduced it from six to five. But his home is, is to the left of those homes on this side. I have no question. The way you guys position them there, kind of forward fronting from the lot, right. and also a little bit set left. I, I assume that was done with the most consideration for elevation and flood issues. Is that the reason? It was, and and, uh, and what we did just so you, we we just redesigned the front of the of the homes to provide for a porch okay. in the front and a doorway, so it appears to be the front of the unit. Yeah. However, the units will likely be accessed through the garage right. in, the, in that in that manner. Yeah. So I saw you nodding there. Is that correct? Is that? Yeah. Yeah. Pat Lagoon to sell work. So, uh, um, yeah. So we had to. The main reason for that was drainage, uh, two drainage uh, basins sort of like to the right and to the rear. Okay. Um, and right now there's essentially no drainage. None, right? right? Yeah. 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 It's a long back to it. can be. It can be. And I think, I think obviously that's why we want to elevate these buildings. I, I don't know how those uh, existing structures did during the heavy rainstorms, but I would imagine they had some. Well, yeah. probably not, right? They probably had some flooding issues. So this will dramatically improve their Listen, as Pat can tell you, this flood. Um, uh, controls to allow flooded water to pass in through the garages. Any impact on the proposed? I mean, I know it's been talked about now for five years. I don't know we purchased it a long time, seven, maybe, maybe even longer. Uh, any issues these buildings will impact on on what we're trying to do? With no, the, won't have any impact on the, on the yeah. pump station. I, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what the status of the pump station is, whether it's the city's actually going to move forward with it, but they certainly control that site, but no, it won't have any impact on that. And we had, you know, as you know, through the planning board process, we had peer review engineers review yeah, yeah. cats and, and to sell for some um, drainage controls, and um, never raised any concerns about that. Okay. Thank you. The easement won't affect that drainage situation? In the no, you're right of it. No, so there would be an underground, um, the proposed drainage that they're, they're doing in the lot behind it would be some type of underground pipe. Um, and we took that into consideration with the basin. Thank you. Yeah, so you come off the, the brook, right? Probably, that's what they're probably their plan was. Is that why you're giving them that easement? Is that? Yeah, because I believe they're putting a pump station from my understanding. Behind it, yeah. So behind the it. Would be, yeah. And then I, my understanding, reading the report from um, the company that did it for the, the city, is then diverting that up or downstream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Create more issues. <laughs> Thank you. Is there anyone here that wants to speak in favor? My name is uh, James Devine. I live at 117 Brown Street. I'm going to speak in favor, but I had a couple questions too. Can I ask a question? Yeah, I can. Uh, one of my neighbors had a, asked a question. I'll ask you, and I assume you want to ask uh, there is a, a catch basin on the street. I think they were going to do. Are they going to do the sidewalks? Are they do the, right? They are going to do the sidewalks. So under the sidewalks, uh, in front of the building, there is one very old catch basin that one of my neighbors asked about, and uh, he just wanted to make sure that it was addressed and properly connected and drained. Uh, my impression is that it's an extremely old one and it may have never really drained properly so it might have up the water um, but ideally you're going to be digging up anyway so it'll be right under there so we just want to make sure that it's addressed uh, yeah i'm sorry about that yes yeah. uh yeah so thank you for bringing that up so that's located right here kind of where the driveway right, entrance right. is yeah. uh it's currently a gutter inlet so you kind of see it's it it's weird yeah it has yeah. A, it's an old one yeah, yeah. so what we're going to do is obviously remove that We'll remove the uh, curving and where are we? right here, we're going to do something like this. From catch basin, yeah. Yeah, so before it was probably, it's kind of all one structure and it's, right. uh, we believe it's like a leaching uh, exactly. structure. Well, I don't know if it's connected to anything. We don't think it is. As far as we can tell, it is not. Right. It, it just leaches there. So that'll be part. We, we are addressing it. Um, there'll be a new catch basin instead of the curb. Yep. Okay. Gutter inlet, it'll be kind of like a standard catch basin right, and it'll perfect. be routed to that same structure okay. um, and probably cleaned out in the process. Excellent. Uh, all right, that's good. And then as far as uh, Furnace Ave uh, pump station, 
Uh, don't quote me, but as far as I know, um, we've already received a uh, word now. That's the only thing we haven't received is we need more funding because of <coughs> COVID stuff. But to the best of my knowledge, everything's drawn up, and uh, we have um, somebody, I think, under contract possibly that's already um, that we chose. Well, but uh, that's what I don't know everything. I'm just a regular guy. I'm on TV. <laughs> But uh, so, anyways, uh, they really worked hard with us. They did come with too many in the beginning. They worked with us. We we're really happy with the fact that they did um, add the front stuff, so it makes it look a little bit more appealing from the street. And uh, I really like the way the planning board also worked. So uh, it was really nice to be able to work together mm -hmm. and find a happy medium. Uh, Mr. Fleming, you know, we all came together, and uh, what happens? Uh, it was good, and that's the way it should work. We should be able to talk, right. come to a, a joint idea, and make sure everybody's happy and we all get what we want. Right. So, um, good to hear. Yeah, no, I know. I really, and in the planning board, um, one of the gentlemen, he scolded somebody else for doing that, not working with the uh, people and the neighbors, which I was happy to hear him scold them also because that's not right either. So, um, good job, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Ice cream later. <laughs> I love ice cream. Is there anyone else who want to speak in favor? Second call, third call, followed by the hearing call. I have a letter here from the DPW 107 Cross, Cross Street, ZDA 2200, review reviewed, provided comments for this project to the planning board. All the comments were provided, have been addressed properly. We do not have any other further comments from the Zoning Board of Appeals at this time. Is there anyone opposed or undecided? Opposed or undecided? Did your homework first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First call. Right. Second call. Like four months. <laughs> Third call. Follow up by the hearing call. I'll be voting in favor. I'm in favor. Absolutely. Black lines. Can I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, ZBA 22 100. Peter Latin for a special permit variance and special permit floodplain. Demolish the existing single family homes and construct five new townhouse style homes on the premise number 107 and 111 Cross Street. Plenty to make a motion to grant the special permit variance and special permit floodplain. Second. On the motion, stand in. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank Hold. you very much. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Further well, on tonight. Thank you for your compliments. GBA 22103. Hybrid. Brendan Wombaugh for a variance finding to connect in the long gate, the dominance on the right side of the roof, create habitable master bedroom suite on the premises number 117 Dimmick Street. Yeah, How are you? Hi. I'm Last Lombard. time you were here, we had stuff in the basement and stuff in the backyard. Now we're dealing just with dominance, correct? Correct. That's correct. Um, tell us what you want to do up there. Well, my husband and I have lived in the and almost 40 years, and we'll take another 30. So, we raised our three children here in this diverse and vibrant city. We've always been active contributors to the city, things like coaching new soccer, teaching CCD, delivering meals on wheels, singing to the Quincy Coral Society, and more. This is our community. We were rooted here, and we want to stay here. President Hill neighborhood is idyllic, and due to ascension of the train, only a couple miles from our grandchildren. This wasn't really a business decision at all. We were on the watch for years for a suitable house in the neighborhood and paid full price in 2018. The plan has always been to rent for a period of time before moving into, a, into it ourselves. This has been a thoughtful, respectful process. We installed new siding and historically after cutters, we placed a weed plot lawn, coordinated with neighbors to remove overgrown trees, and nurtured neglected plantings and added new ones. We and our town accept a positive addition to the neighborhood. The house at 117 Bennett Street has fine rooms, and we love it. As you know, it's 100 years old, and we want to maintain its character and be right by the house, the neighborhood, and for ourselves. We're looking forward to downsizing without downgrading. We want to age in place without having to worry about aging plumbing heating and electric, deteriorating plaster, and to be able to have the comfort and convenience of air conditioning, quick insulation, an elevator, modern bathrooms, and a master bedroom. 
To that end, we have worked with our architect to change the exterior of the building as little as possible. The only changes we are asking for tonight involve the side of the house that is virtually hidden from anyone's views by trees that are nearly the same age as the house. We did address concerns that were raised. We are not changing the number of bedrooms in the house. This, is, this house is in residence A, and we respect and, re and support keeping residence A zones intact. This house was built as a two family before there was zoning of any kind. We don't wish to create anything more of it. We really don't. We just want to live there in comfort. Our neighbors have been very supportive, and we all feel our innovation ideas represent a net benefit to the neighborhood, neighborhood and the city. I, or our architect, Pat Fisher, uh, who is here with me tonight, would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. And uh, uh, we have uh, letters of support from the Neighborhood Association Thank you. and from our and three of our abutting neighbors. So just to refresh my memory, just because. Mm -hmm. So, I think the last time we were trying to oh, add the, no, the elevator still in the plans, right? So will the elevator will still be existing, we're still fixing the egress to the second story, is that right? Yeah, and then, we just got, I think it's some dwelling space on the first, on the, in the basement, base. is that correct? And we, we just removed that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think that is storage for one unit, unit one and unit two. Right, right. Yeah. 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 Uh, this one here, I need for the bracket. Okay. I need for the bracket. Uh, we don't need that. Again, do you want one to fill them now? Or yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. First, first, each one's favor. We're going to read the letters that we got from the neighborhood. This one's from William O'Brien, 109 Monroe Road, Quindy. Uh, favor as this project of bugs mine I've discussed the issues with the owners and I would support the changes as they are presented please comment if you have any questions Phyllis and Steve Fair 115 Monroe Road uh, we're writing regarding a zoning variance site uh, to convert livable space in the existing two family residence at 117 Dimmick as shown in the plans they've submitted Margaret and Brendan have addressed any questions we have, and we have no concerns about the project. We appreciate the time that Margaret and Brendan have taken to discuss their proposal with us, and look forward to many years as friendly next door neighbors in this beautiful neighborhood. Mark Cole, come back, 84 Glendale Road. Um, we are butters of the property. We have seen the plans for upgrades at 117 Dimmick, and would like to go on the record with the board. And being in full support of such changes, we do hope the board will find in favor of the applicants. And then the Hospital Home Neighborhood Association. Um, last October, at the invitation of the house, uh, Hospital Hill Neighborhood Association, Margaret and Brendan Lombard provided answers to questions about their proposed project. While we do not speak for individual butters, no concerns were expressed by neighbors at that meeting initially. Additionally, no concerns have been expressed during the current proposal before the DBA. We appreciate the time Margaret and Brendan have taken to address the proposal with our Hospital Hill Neighbor Association neighbors, and that's from Ted Mulrain, 101 Monroe Road. Ted Mulray, 101 Monroe. Um, 
thank for reading the letter from the uh, Neighborhood Association. Wanted to uh, speak personally in support. Um, I think that's a, a perfectly reasonable uh, proposal, um, keeping with the neighborhood. Yes, it's a Res A district, and I appreciate the board's uh, defense of Res A in general, but I think this is a uh, perfectly uh, appropriate uh, proposal for an existing two family. Um, my, my perspective, having a owner occupied, renovated two family, a lot better than one that's uh, rented and remains unrented. So. Thank you. Thank you. For anyone else, last call. Call it five of hearing calls and alert you from PPW. We have reviewed the middle of the above reference project and have no comments. Anyone opposed or undecided? John? Yes. Uh, John Orfeld, 62 Bramwell Road. When I was just doing research while everyone else was talking, right now on apartments.com, 117 Dimmick Street, two bedrooms, two parking spaces. So it's kind of like this is for rentals, and that's going to make be made like a third rental that they're going to have on the third floor. So this is the residential A area, and I don't see how this is much different than the proposal that we voted against before. This, you know, it's the parking issue in that area on Dimmick Street. You don't want people parking right on Dimmick. And you don't want, you know, having a two family and two rental units is, is already more than what a single family of residential aid people have. So just for that reason, like, I don't really think there should be multi units in a residential aid area. So I'm against it. There's two units in that house. Yeah, they'd probably rent on the first floor. There's two in units there. in that house. They make it theirs, the third floor, with, with the with massive the second, suite yeah, up there. Second and third. two families there. It's all upstairs. Okay. okay. Nice. All right. That's great. Anyone else? Opposed or undecided? I'm going to try to hear any calls. How are you going to your family? It's a beautiful building. I think, I think I appreciate your time to come back. And, and I know you were a little frustrated in the first situation. And, and, and just, I appreciate the consideration that you put in and continue to put in. And I, I thank you for, for taking the time to do that. And I think it's probably going to be beautiful. I hope you made the place that you want. That's such a property. <laughs> He's got a blue house too, you know. <laughs> I did O'Brien's comments. Nice job. Uh, Kevin Morgan, please. CBA 22 103, Margaret and Brendan Lombard for a band trying to, to connect and elongate the dormers on the right side of the roof to create a habitable master bedroom on the premise number 117, Dennis Street, Quincy. I make a motion to grant the variance. Second. On the motion. And then all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Thank you. Last thing on the agenda tonight. 456 Adam Street. Filling building by a special permit to operate a short term rental on the premises number 456 Adam Street. How do I do that? My name is Dr. Piantro. I'm the owner of the 456 Adam Street. So I want to apply the my house to apply for the Airbnb use. Do you currently use it as Airbnb now, or did you in the past? Or is this a, did you do it before we had the new regulation? Did you use it as Airbnb? Uh, no. no. Okay. Uh, I just have a uh, uh, couple, I think a uh, few, few months ago, and then I just received the money, and then I know that I need to uh, apply right. okay. after that. Yeah. Yeah. Last time we were at your property, didn't you want to put in an office or a rental in there? No. You so never just, came before? You just bought, you just bought the you house. Just, yeah, you yeah, just bought the house. house. Oh, you just bought the house. You yeah, bought the house. Yeah, yeah, right. It was the people before. Yeah. They were here not so long ago. Right. Here, here and half. Okay. I just went there again and I'm saying, if I actually wanted to put an office in here. In front his, name was, his name was Old Hamlet. No, I didn't know who it was. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, the reason why I want to apply for the Airbnb is because uh, uh, I have two kids and then uh, I need to uh, uh, I need to babysit them. So uh, 
Unfortunately, I cannot get the uh, like full time job. So I think uh, uh, Air, Airbnb is the uh, best, best way for me. Besides, uh, one side I can get take in my time, and then uh, on the other, uh, okay. Yeah, on the other, uh, on the other hand, I can just take some time. Thank you. You have all the paperwork. I haven't seen it. Oh, sorry. Right. Should be on. Can I, can I ask a question? Yeah. Which, is there a difference between a short-term rental and an Airbnb, or is it the same thing? Same thing. Same thing. Just, just a different way of growing. Oh, okay. And so he has to occupy the same. It's anything under 30 days, I believe, correct? Right. 30 and, days. Is and he has to live there. Yes. Okay. Yeah, he's got to live there. Okay. Yep. And it can't be done in residence A. Huh? And it can't be done in residence A. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, actually, it's in the uh, zoning. Yeah, you're all set. You can have a seat. I have Thank no you. questions. Anyone want to, uh, you guys all set? Question? Yeah, good. Uh, is there anyone speaking in favor? First call? Second call? Third call? Oh, I'm probably hearing polls. A letter here from the DPW. We reviewed the above for this project and have no comments. Anyone opposed to my side? You're up. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Ryan Yacobucci. I reside at 430 Alley Street. And um, I would respectfully request that this board deny this special permit for the short term rental. Uh, I have lived in this city for over 60 years. Uh, I've been a resident uh, at uh, this address, 430 Alley Street, for over 30 years. That's the kind of stability you want to see in your neighborhood. Um, approving this particular special permit would set a dangerous precedent, I believe. So on behalf of, nothing personal against my new neighbor, mm -hmm. but um, on behalf of uh, my rest of the residents uh, in my neighborhood, um, I would respectfully request that you deny this particular permit at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Since the uh, new ordinance went in, we're getting more and more of these every, every, every week. And if they do what they're supposed to do, we have to have a good reason. Next. Anyone else want to speak, Jim? Yeah. Uh, my name is uh, James Blatt. I live right around the corner. Uh, with, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's legal in the area. It's, you right. can approve it in the area. And how far is that? Um, is it right on the cuff of the property where the couple lives there, or is it right in the uh, um, so I, I mean, off the street, I guess, is residential yeah. yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, a couple hours. Uh, Jeunesse wants to get over to like Jeunesse. Yeah, yeah, so like, uh, I know the area, Jeunesse and uh, Hilltop and all those areas. Some really nice houses up there. Um, I'm actually really amazed that uh, there's not more people here. I don't know if they know about it, uh, if they want to them or somebody paid attention. But uh, I feel that the uh, same way that it might be set in uh, a precedence. Uh, if I lived in that area, I might not want. Um, an Airbnb right on next to my house. Um, so I, I'm only, I'm not completely informed on it, so I'm just saying I that. Think, I think when they sign this into law for the city, it's, it's instead of a long-term rental, you can have a short-term rental, but yep. not in zone A or a single family house. Sure. So if there's two and three units, if you live in the house, you can do it. If you don't yep. live in the house, you can't do it. Which means they did it to say that all you occupied is going to watch his house and see who he lets in. Yeah, I even when someone, kind of even working, when yeah. just a rental in there, so he gets money and he don't live there and he don't yeah. care. That's why I think they were thinking, different. but yeah. they said it's okay to do it in, in, in Red Okay. The, the other thing is the city is a watchdog because they, there's like six departments that look at these things. I do. I and monitor them. them. It's 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 not like it's just there. Right. Sure. Yeah. The health of the the fire department, the police Council department. just told me that, that he said that it is uh, very much monitored. And, exactly. yeah, yeah. So, and uh, if he has problems in his place, his license is it's removed. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it, it gives them, before, nobody knew who was where. Sure. At least with this, we know which no ones are allowed. Yeah, there's no right. There was no, one right across the my street in the house neck, yeah. up, up, up in the hill. Right here, what the hell are you doing up here? Yeah, I understand. And, I, I, and I look, I see a different car, and I find out. It's, it's, it's on the Airbnb. I said, hey, dude, stop. Yeah. Stop. Excellent. So, uh, defer to you guys. I just wanted to yeah. just get up and say that little piece, because like I said, I'm right. 
people I did first on, but I did want to just um, mostly undecided, I guess is what I'm saying. Uh, but uh, you explained it very well and a few other things that I've heard, so uh, hopefully it stays quieter. I'm well. still up in the air on myself, but yeah. because you just, it's, it's, it's kind of scary. You really got to watch that. That's got to be watched. Sure. Because it could, it's it's right. But, uh, some of the houses, the solar houses, and things like that, that you're having issues in. Right. Governor Road, you know, it's not worried about, yeah. You can learn about that. That's ADA. You can't do anything about that, man. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you know, how, how did that exist? You've only owned it for eight months. Uh, I'm voting no. Fair. I'm not voting favor. I'd like to have the scrutiny and be able to watch them. Mm -hmm. and, and the neighbors that get a concern in these neighborhoods, and then that's what I prefer to do it, as opposed to have them unregulated and just run it. Yeah. That's, that's my, my point. I'll be voting it. Can I have a motion, please? STR 2210, Quinn Ling Zhao for a special permit to operate a short term rental on the premises of number 456 Adams Street. Indeed. I make a motion to grant the special permit. Second it. Second it. Motion, stand on, all in favor? Aye. Aye. No. Opposed? Opposed? Opposed. Opposed. <laughs> Thank you. Can I have a motion? Thank you. Chairman, I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Let's go, boys.